Welcome to the So Verve Lounge, a podcast for modern entrepreneurs that focuses on digital marketing ecosystems for small businesses. Join your host, CEO and marketing director, Stephanie Rubio, as she brings you marketing tips with a shot of Cafe Con Dulce. Everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Suburb Lounge. My name is Stephanie Rubio. I am the CEO and Marketing Director here at Suburb Marketing Group, bringing you this week's episode. And today I'm so excited because today we are actually, well, this Saturday coming up on the 24th, it's our podcast anniversary. Yes, so this entire week, we're celebrating our podcast anniversary and the anniversary of the Suburb Lounge podcast. This is the second year that we have been podcasting. And we really started um, just like, I kind of want to just give you like a rundown of how all of this happened. And I know that I touch based on this a little bit in July, we did an episode of a welcome to uh, their new, our new season. And if you haven't heard that episode, head over to our archives on iTunes and you can see um, that episode there in the listing. Go ahead and check that out. But today I really want to talk to you about just how this experience has been as a podcaster and um, I really want to just have a conversation with you about some things that I've learned and some things that I want to share with you because I know so many of you want to start a podcast and so many of you um, really want to have an opportunity to express yourself and have conversations with your community and continue to nurture your community in this way. And as I said in a recent um, uh, post on Instagram, if the question is, should you start a podcast, my answer is always going to be yes. I think it's just such a great way to have those conversations with your audience members. And it really is easy, you know, and especially nowadays where everyone is telling you to do video and to get on live. And I know a lot of you struggle with that. I know my struggle with live video is just the time, carving the time in my day to, you know, from servicing this, you know, a, a fairly large roster of clients. Um, obviously the day to days of Soverve, um, my personal life, my mother's business, um, two little dogs. <laughs> it's just, it gets a lot, which, you know, thankfully, uh, Ms. Zoe is in her crate and t- taking a much needed nap, but otherwise you'd hear her. I mean, it is a true circus sometimes I promise you. So, it's, it's hard to say, okay, well, let me put my hair down, throw on a bit of mascara, put on a, a cute top and get on live. It's hard. And so having the podcast has allowed me the opportunity to record wherever I am, as long as I have the right equipment and really get this, this piece of content out to you when you need it. Right. So that's kind of like what I want to do. I want to have a conversation. First of all, you know, as I've mentioned before, we started the podcast really because it was an opportunity that we saw where a lot of people were telling us, a lot of gurus, if you will, um, visionaries were saying uh, this type of media was going to be more important than ever in the years to come. And so we we listened. And apparently the folks at Anchor (laughs) did too, which is how we uh, host our podcast. And we really started on Anchor. We started just doing these small snippets of content on Anchor on a weekly basis. And from there, that December, we we started in, in August. And in December, we thought, okay, as of January, we're going to actually do this formally as a podcast. And here we are two years later, producing an episode a week. There are breaks in between uh, different seasons. So for example, coming up in December, the last half of December. So from the 15th on, you will not be um, hearing from us because it is our, our winter break, if you will, before the start of our fifth season. So that's that. But other than that, you're hearing from me every single week and I'm producing these episodes uh, on a weekly basis. So today I want to talk to you about a little bit about the equipment that I use and 
the software that I use to edit the episodes. I also want to talk about my process for podcasting because I really have it down to a science (laughs) and I can produce and edit and have all of the episodes scheduled in about two hours, which is pretty neat. Now, I have, again, because I know myself and I know my workload, I have marketed it and I have branded my podcast as Hit Cardio. So if you're familiar with Hit Cardio, that's high interval training, right? Um, <laughs> so Hit cardio intermittent training so you're doing sprints in your in your cardio sessions of like a minute where you're really really going in and hard for like about a minute and you're increasing your heart rate and then you're decreasing it to kind of stabilize for like 10 15 minutes and then you're doing another hard sprint and so on and so forth so i got familiarized with hit cardio when i um started my weight loss journey and I was doing hit cardio on the treadmill. I was doing hit cardio on the elliptical. And it's a wonderful way to burn a lot of fat very quickly and to keep your heart rate just going at 140 plus. And I was loving it. And I'm a huge fan of hit cardio. So, um, yeah, oh, by the way, if you're not familiar with Fitness Blender on YouTube, hit cardio at home. You, they have wonderful sessions, like 30 minute sessions, an hour session videos completely for free on the YouTube channel, not sponsored at all. But again, get familiarized with her cardio. It will change your life. If you are someone who loves working out, gets bored easily, and is just looking for a good cardio burnout. I love it. So that's how I decided to market and brand the Silver of Lounge podcast. I didn't want to do these super long 30, 40 minute episodes, even though I know people enjoy them. I feel like, okay, so let me get my marketing fix, 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes we push 20, 25 minutes if we have guests, but our podcast episodes hardly ever go above 25 minutes. That is kind of like my cutoff, but I try to stay within 15 minutes. 15, 20 minutes is really like that that ballpark. And what that does, because especially here in Orlando, like I calculated, it takes everyone any anywhere about 10, 15 minutes to get anywhere. Uh, 25, 20 to 25 minutes if you're going to get on the turnpike, right? So again, it's not, you know, I, I thought about the local commute, my local market when I thought about it. And then I also thought about someone that was working out, somebody that wanted to do a quick cardio before they hit the weights or before they hit a spin class. And then you're getting on the treadmill, you're getting on an elliptical for 10 to 15 minutes to, to kind of warm up. So this is literally your warm up of marketing, right? Obviously, we then have our blog that supports these episodes. And then we also have our email list and we have, which is our newsletter, the Silver Way newsletter. And then you also have our social media platforms to then continue on, um, which where we continue on that expansion of that content, right? So the first thing is that you need to determine how you want to brand your podcast. And that's going to then lead into the type of equipment that you use your podcasting schedule, and then it's going to lead into then all the other things. So for me, okay, for me, it's important that I had a schedule. I needed a schedule that I can, that I knew that I could stick to and a schedule that I knew was going to be something that I could produce. Okay. So a lot of people produce multiple episodes a week. We do one episode a week and we found that one episode a week is necessary and important in order to grow a podcast community. If you're someone that's only doing podcasting sporadically or you're someone that's only going to do podcasts for like every two weeks or like once a month, you're not going to be able to grow your podcast as well as you would if you were recording an episode every single week. So that's number one. I found also that your that how big your community is is also going to be important. Someone that has a huge following on Instagram, a huge email list, and someone that has a lot of media attention can probably get away with doing podcast episodes every two weeks. But the rest of us with smaller, you know, in the grander scheme of things, smaller communities, you know, we can't get away with that. Uh, an episode a week is 
really baseline, right? So I knew I wanted to do an episode a week. And really when it comes to podcasting, when you publish your episode, it's really up to you. Uh, Mornings are typically the best times to do it, I have found. And that's that as far as the schedule, right? As far as content, that's obviously going to be depending on, you know, what your podcast is about and how you really want to break up that content, whether or not you want to have guests. I personally, and here's the thing, we have podcast guests here in-house. We try to have a guest uh, about once a month, um, sometimes depending on who we want to have or how we want to lay out the content, we won't have a guest at all. Me personally, though, as a podcast listener, I personally do not like podcasts that have guests. Isn't that weird? It's so weird and random. But when I fall in love with a podcast and I start to see a ton of interviews where I'm not hearing from the host and their expertise, I tend to get very turned off by that. And so I skip over (laughs) the ones that have interviews. You guys let me know. If you're listening, let me know in a comment on Facebook, Instagram, you can send me a DM or you can even send me an email at hello at sorov.com and tell me if this is you. I am interested to hear that. And um, I think we're due too for a little survey. So be on the lookout for that. If you're on our email list, I'll have a little gift for you for a survey because there's some questions that I have for you anyways. But I think I'm going to throw that question in there. Do you like guests or do you not? Because I know I don't. I don't. But again, just because I don't, I don't like to not have guests on the podcast just, you know, for that reason. Because what if you guys do? Maybe you guys say, hey, we want more guests. And then at that time, then, yeah, I'll have to I'll have to start bringing on more people. Um, But yeah, so that's one thing. So all of that, your content and your your content calendar for the podcast is going to be contingent upon that. Um, If you have launches coming up, if you have things coming up in your business. I personally like to stick to a teaching opportunity where I'm having these, like, let's sit down, have a cup of coffee type of conversations with you. And I'm really teaching. Um, Some people like to use it as an opportunity to pitch, which is totally great as well. It's just a storytelling opportunity, period. And I think going into it with a clear mind of of how it is that you want to do this works. Now, I am hoping to have an, um, uh, a very amazing, super wonderful guest this month that is going to kind of give us even more insights of all on all of this stuff. So be on the lookout for that later this month. Um, as far as equipment, I use a USB mic. It is a Blue Yeti. It is the only mic we've ever used. Um, but I didn't buy it right away. I kind of, again, like most things, you want to give things kind of like room to settle in before you start making investments because a Yeti um, is about 100 to $125, $150, depending on the version that you purchase. I believe the one that I have is a silver one. I believe it was about $99 on Amazon. Again, none of this stuff is... Um, sponsored. This is just what I use. Um, and then with that, I use, um, a, uh, like a cover, I have a little cover for it as well. And then I have, you know, something that kind of cancels out the thudding of my B's and my P's. Um, as far as equipment though, I have literally used my Yeti the longest. That is what I have used the longest for, um, podcasting and I love it. Now with the Yeti, you're going to find that there are a lot of mixed reviews. Some people love their Yeti mic. Some people do not like it. Uh, It's taken me personally a long time to kind of get the settings right to how I want my mic to, to sound and how I want it to be configured in order for it to work properly for me. Okay, so a lot of this stuff, again, you're going to purchase and you're going to have to kind of finagle, if you will, and kind of, um, you know, do your own thing in order to determine the right setting and this and that. But I like the Yeti because the settings are very clear cut and very simple to use, right? So what I'm going to do is that to support this episode, I'm going to, um, there's going to be a, a, a newsletter write up and I'll include some of this information in there, but definitely get yourself a, a good mic is 
the bottom line. So the cover that I have for it, it's um, the, the windscreen that I have for it is specific to that. And that's the one that um, uh, helps with, you know, the thudding and it helps, you know, kind of kind of keep the noise to a minimum the background noise and then on top of that because the room where I record is my my office now I used to have these beautiful drapes here now most of you know my mom has an a custom drapery boutique here in central Florida so I had these beautiful drapery uh curtains in here with blackout lining I mean they were gorgeous but I had to take them down because the puppy aka Zoe um, used to like to pull on them. And I was scared that the entire rod was going to come down, even though, you know, they were on anchors and stuff, but you know how puppies are. And I didn't want her to destroy the beautiful fabric. So I ended up taking the, the drapes down. And so I don't have carpet in here. I have, um, hardwood floor. So again, it's, there's not a lot of noise absorption. So sometimes it does get a little echoey in this room. So to counteract that, um, I did purchase a pop filter as well. Okay, so the pop filter, again, is specific to the Blue Yeti microphone. And I'm going to have these links in the newsletter, the, exactly the ones that I purchased. So between the, um, the, wind, uh, the windscreen, between that and then between the pop filter and the Yeti, which are the three pieces of, of, of equipment that I use to produce a podcast, um, I'm going to put about $150 in investment in there. Okay, so it's about $150 for that. Now to record and um, if you will edit, because I really don't edit this too, too much. If I do, it's very minimally. Um, it's I use Audacity, which is a freeware um, software. You can get it for free for Mac and for Windows. Um, I believe for Mac. I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't quote me on that. I will have to do some research on that. Um, and I'll put it all of that in the show notes as well. And Audacity is amazing and I love it. And again, you kind of have to configure the settings a little bit and it, it is a little overwhelming. So my recommendation is to check out YouTube. Um, there's some wonderful podcasters and YouTubers that use Audacity for, you know, voiceovers for their videos and stuff. And they've done amazing reviews and you can find yourself immersed in the world of podcast editing or voice editing. I personally just, you know, I have it set to kind of like what I like and I keep it going. And I, again, for me, in order for me to produce these podcast episodes, and it, needed, it needed to be the, a simple system. It needed to be a simple process. And all, not only for myself and my business and my lifestyle, but also once I bring on someone to edit these podcasts, I want them, you know, to to have a good, simple system that they can use as well. That won't take them a lot of time. I'm all about time management. Okay. I'm all about time management and making sure now those of you who know me know that time management hasn't always been my strongest suit, <clears throat> but as I get older and as I identify the things that I need to work on as you know, just a CEO, an entrepreneur, a team leader, all of these different things in my life time management has been something that I've had to seriously hone in on. And with that being said, things like producing a podcast, all of these things in my business, um, fast, easy, quick is the biggest thing for me, like the biggest thing for me. My team will tell you that I'm all about providing them the resources that they need to produce the work fast and efficiently. I love that. So that's like my thing, especially, I don't know. I, th I think it's like my new thing, to be honest. This year has, it's been my thing. So again, um, those are as far as equipment and as far as software, that's what I do. Now, um, I also, on top of that, I also use another system. I'm actually opening the, um, my computer here really briefly so that I can get the correct name right so that I can share that with you. Mavavi. Mavavi Video Suite is then what I use to then, once the audio is done, I have a project, if you will, on Mavavi that's already uh, titled The Silver of Lounge Podcast, which has my intro, it has my intro music, it has, you know, a portion for this, you know, clip, and then the outro. So literally all I have to do is then pop the clip in there, and then export that 
and we're good to go. I pop it into Anchor, which is how we host the podcast. Uh, the descriptions are already done. Just kind of, again, I have a template for the description so that then I, all I have to do is the meat of that and schedule that out. Once I have it to where I can upload it to Anchor, I also have uh, that core file. I archive it, obviously. I ar- archive that for then my team to listen to so that they can then create uh, the content pieces that they need. So newsletters, social media content pieces, blogs, um, and just so that they are aware of what is happening before it happens, okay? Because it's important for them to have all, all this these pieces of content for, you know, engaging with our community, replying to comments as things need. So even though one team member may have nothing to do with the podcast, it's important that they listen to this so that they can then um, have those conversations with our community because I may not always be the one um, that's making the replies on social. So that just kind of gives you an idea. So the process itself is very seamless. Um, I've mentioned before that I I am starting to actively look for someone to be in charge of this piece um, so that then uh, it's, you know, hopefully it's something that once we reach season five, which is in January, I can then refer this uh, process to um, a team member that would then be in charge of this. And then hopefully they'll do the same for our clients because we do have um, clients that also do um, do host podcasts and we know we have a lot of clients that are wanting to also launch podcasts as well. So that should be very interesting and very fun. So that's it for today's episode. I'm going to make sure that a lot of this stuff is in the show notes for you, which I'm really excited about so that you can check it out. As always, if you have any questions um, about what it's been like to podcast, uh, starting a podcast and you know, I will say the biggest thing for me is consistency. Um, uh, to be consistent, I think that you have to do something that you love. And if you don't like it or enjoy it, you're not going to be consistent with it. That's with anything. That's with any job. That's with anything that you take on in life. If you're not enjoying it, you're not going to be consistent with it. So um, make sure that you know that there's a commitment that comes along with this, um, especially if you're doing something for business. Don't get into it if you know that it's not something that you're going to be able to commit to. So that's going to be the last tidbit for you, my little bonus tip. So again, if you have any questions regarding any of this, go ahead and reach out to me at hello at soberf.com or anything that is going to be left for you in the show notes. You can also reach me on any social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Start so far.